Hi, I'm George Anderson, Senior Minister of Second Presbyterian Church. During Lent, we have offered devotionals that focus on the I Am statements of Jesus. Today, listen to the passage from John 10, which begins with the statement we'll consider today. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and have power to take it up again. I received this command from my Father. Most people enter and leave our church building by its portico entrance because most of the parking is on Mountain Avenue. But it's an inspiring way to enter the church. You enter, you pass over a cross and a compass, and enter into Kirk Hall with its nave-like ceiling. At the end of Kirk Hall hangs a large, simple, beautiful cross. Coming into Kirk Hall, it is a welcome with a message. To be part of this church is about finding direction by following Jesus. Not many people are still in the church who remember the days when the Mountain Avenue parking did not exist. Instead, there were large homes, a few of them with turntables in their garages so that a car that pulled in could be rotated and drive straight out. At that time, the entrance that was most often used to enter the church for Sunday worship was at the corner of 3rd and Highland Avenue, our tower entrance. Now, coming in that door was far less dramatic. You entered a little room underneath the bell tower where you would receive a bulletin and immediately enter the sanctuary. However, small as it is, it was not a room without inspiration. The space is adorned by two stained glass windows. If you took a moment, you would see two scenes depicted in those windows that would prepare you for worship. One is of Jesus holding a lantern, symbolizing the I am statement I talked about two weeks ago. I am the light of the world. And the other picture depicts a shepherd walking as if he's entering the church himself. That scene evokes two passages. The first is of the parable where Jesus asks, what would a shepherd do if a single sheep has wandered from the flock? The shepherd, if a good one, leaves the 99 to find the lost sheep. And if you're ever someone who has problems with the idea that some no good, some hypocrite, someone who keeps messing up is still welcome in this church and you don't get Jesus' point, well, he'll drive the point home by telling the other two parables, one of the woman who searches diligently for the lost coin and the other of the father searching the horizon, looking for the prodigal to return home. You'll notice that the shepherd who is betrayed in the window is not just any shepherd, but Jesus, or at least the Jesus who has been portrayed in churches influenced by Western European art. And that it is Jesus who is betrayed brings us to the other passage that this window evokes. It is the one that I read from the 10th chapter of John. I am the good shepherd, Jesus says. Now, if you don't need to be convinced by Jesus that sometimes you're the one who is lost, that sometimes you're the one who has strayed from God's will, and that sometimes you are the one who has forgotten God's image is within you, well, then you don't need to be convinced that it's a good thing that Jesus is our shepherd and there's reason to sing, I once was lost, but now I'm found. 
was blind, but now I see. Jesus will go to hell itself to bring you back into the flock. The shepherd will even lay down his life for his sheep, for you. If the mission statement of our church is finding direction by following Jesus, then let's remember why we do it. We follow the one who finds us. That's good news, not only of our passage, but of Holy Week. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Yes, that is the good news of the passage. But our passage also contains a warning. Did you hear it? Did you hear about the wolves and the hired hands? There are hired hands, Jesus says, who may seem like shepherd because they watch over sheep, but do so only for what's in it for them. If a single sheep wanders off, they're not going to bother to seek it out. Whatever can pounce on a single sheep out there can pounce on them. And if an actual wolf showed up or a pack of them, it wouldn't be surprising if the hired hand makes a run for it and leaves the sheep to fend for themselves. There are those, sadly, who might want to shepherd us, but who really don't have our best interests at heart. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus spoke of wolves in sheep's clothing. Well, what if the one who presents himself or herself as a shepherd is really a wolf? What if the one who says that he or she has our best interests at heart is really out for their own gratification? Here's an example many of you know about. Some of you have gotten emails from me requesting that you purchase some sort of gift card and send it to me. And the email tugs at your heartstrings because you've been told that I'm doing the Lord's work and I'm far too busy to purchase the cards myself, but could you please purchase a card and send it to me so that I can then give it to someone struggling with cancer or some other sort of problem? When you get those emails, I need you to know my voice so that you know that it's not me speaking to you, it's someone presenting themselves as your pastor. I want you to know me, and I want you to know this about me. I would never solicit you to send me money or gifts. This is just one example of how people will pass themselves off as someone you can trust, but whose aim really is to abuse that trust for their own ends. We believe that the God of justice and love and compassion speaks to us through the voice of Jesus. So to recognize Jesus' voice is to recognize that everything he says and does is in keeping with the character of the God who hears the cries of those in need, who calls for justice in our community life, who shows forgiveness, who speaks the truth that we need to hear, not just the truth that we want to hear, and who loves us and loves our world selflessly. Beware the wolves among us. Beware of those who would shepherd or lead us, but not for our good or the greater good. And especially beware of anyone who speaks in Jesus' name, but whose message veers from the words of Jesus or the example he said. That one has a voice not to be trusted. But do listen for the voice of justice, of mercy, of reconciliation, and unconditional love. When you hear that voice, I hope you recognize it as the voice of the Good Shepherd who knows your name and calls you to follow in order to bring you safely home.